What up guys, Gangs Pranks are back with a brand new video and today I am bringing you a little something different but not really so different. If you can tell by the title, this is kind of a throwback video of mine. Uh, back in the day, I used to do a lot of wrestling content. I used to do these type of videos where uh, I would kind of fantasy book a show. And you know, I'd fantasy book WrestleMania, Bound for Glory, usually the biggest, the bigger pay-per-views. Uh, and I'd kind of just assemble my show, or if I was in charge, this is what I would do. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of do that uh, with this here, with AEW All Out coming out. All Out is AEW's WrestleMania show. And to be honest, it's looking kind of disappointing, and not necessarily uh, disappointing. Like, some of the matches look like they're going to be good. But as of right now... Uh, I'm recording this August 23rd, and the pay-per-view is about a week and a half away. It's on September 3rd, and there's only three matches announced. And the matches announced don't sound very appealing. Uh, we'll, we'll go through the cards soon, but uh, I thought this would be kind of a fun video to do with a throwback of mine. How would I book AEW All Outs? And uh, that's what we're going to be doing. We're also going to be booking the six-man trios, whatever you want to call it, tournaments, the tag title tournaments. Because uh, that's another thing I find a little underwhelming uh, with the, the bracket that they have. So... Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've done a wrestling video, I'm gonna be honest, I actually, I, th I don't think I've played, m I'll just put it like this, I haven't really watched much wrestling recently, um, whenever I do watch anything wrestling related, it does tend to be AEW, uh, I do watch WWE from time to time, but mainly just YouTube clips, I can't tell you the last time I watched a show. Actually, it'd probably be WrestleMania. I watched a little bit of WrestleMania, but like an actual like two-hour, three-hour show, uh, I I have no fucking idea. But I enjoy watching AEW. I don't know for some reason it feels fresh to me when I watch it. It feels exciting. The crowd. I think the crowd is like a huge part of why I like AEW. They're just very into everything. They like everybody. Uh, they react for everything. Sometimes they might not react well. But for the most part, the p fans are very accepting and kind of open and receptive to, to different things and different characters, whatever, you know, so on. And uh, I don't know, it just adds like a freshness to wrestling. It just, I, I, I like it a lot. And I, I really enjoy the AEW product. I like the roster. I like the shows that they put on. With WWE, uh, they're in a pretty interesting spot right now. Uh, just because, you know, Vince is gone, Triple H is in charge. So it's kind of... WWE's in an interesting place, and you can see the ratings are going up and stuff like that because there is intrigue. Uh, you know, people have come back that were released within the past uh, couple years, and uh, it's, it makes for a pretty interesting show. For me personally, I don't know, I just can't get into it, even when I watch these clips on YouTube. Uh, there's just something about it, it just, I don't know, it just feels blah. It, yeah, I don't know, there's just something about it, I don't enjoy it. As much. Also, I want to talk about the game that you are watching. Uh, you're watching WWE 2K22. I actually bought this just for this video because, uh, you know, I, I thought of this video. I wanted to do it, and uh, I was looking at the wrestling games that I had. And the last time I bought a wrestling game was WWE 2K16. Yeah, couple years since I bought in a wrestling game. Well, I do have Battlegrounds, and I was gonna do that, but you can't do cause and. Uh, usually, like, when I would do reviews and shit for wrestling, I'd like to have matches that happen during the show and kind of put it as a backdrop. So I'm like, I saw WWE 2K22 on sale. I bought it just for this video. I've actually been quite enjoying myself. I do want to get back on track for AEW All Out. Uh, I just want to talk about WWE 2K22 a little bit. I've been playing a little bit. Um, kind of playing all the game modes, trying universe a little bit, the GM mode, just having matches. Uh, the match, the, the controls are weird. I haven't mastered that fully. If you watch some of these matches, you're just going to see me get my ass kicked because I'm still kind of learning the game. I should play the tutorial. Uh, I've been getting into the Rey Mysterio showcase thing. Uh, that's been a good way for me to kind of learn, uh, the controls. I should have done that before playing this, but you know what? You live and learn. Um, yeah, the controls are just very weird. GM mode is 
extremely bare bones. Uh, universe seems cool, but doesn't seem as customizable as uh, as I would have liked it to be. But uh, overall, WW2K22, it seems like a, a step in the right direction. I didn't play 2K20, which I heard was an absolute disaster. Uh, but from what I last played to what I played now, I think it was quite the improvement. So enough about that. I want to get back to the actual topic on hand. Maybe I'll do another video, wrestling video, uh, kind of talking about more in depth of what I like, what I don't like in the current landscape of wrestling. Maybe we'll talk more about 2K22. We'll see. We'll see how this video does, if there's a good reception to it. And people are like, holy shit, you're doing wrestling videos again. Not necessarily, but we will see. We'll see. I I'm going to leave that open. So let's get on to our... Topic of today, AEW All Out. I want to go through the pay-per-view card that they have announced so far. So like I said, the pay-per-view is September 3rd. And right now they have four matches. And two of them don't have people announced. So we're, we're going to go through the card real quick. And then I'm going to talk about what, uh, what I created. So uh, this is on the Wikipedia. These are the matches that have been announced. Uh, so they have the finals of the trios title. Uh, obviously no one's been confirmed for that yet. The matches are going on on, uh, Dynamite and, uh, and Rampage. So, two trios teams are going to go at it, and they're going to crown the first ever AEW World Trios Champion. Um, I think right now it's probably, I don't even remember who is in the bracket. Uh, it was a very disappointing when they announced these titles and they showed the bracket. I was like, man, that is so disappointing. I'm actually going to pull it up now, because, uh... I want to see, I should have prepped this beforehand, but what are you going to do? Yeah, so I'll put the bracket up now on the screen. So we got Death Triangle versus Will Ospreay and Ozzy Open. Uh, and Gerade El Idolo and Dragon Lee and Rush taking on Young Bucks. And we know now their partner is Kenny Omega. Uh, so it looks like advancing from that side of the bracket is probably going to be the Young Bucks and Kenny. I don't see Death Triangle or Will Ospreay, Ozzy Open advancing, but that's just me. Anything can happen. And then on the other side of the bracket, you got House of Black, Dark Order, Trust Busters, and Best Friends. The clear favorite looks like House of Black, but we'll have to wait to see. It could be Best Friends. Uh, we know it's not going to be Trust Busters. I highly doubt it's going to be Dark Order. Uh, so it's probably going to be Kenny Omega and the Bucks versus House of Black for the finals. If I had to be a betting man, that's probably what I would go with. Uh, but yeah, this tournament is pretty disappointing. Like I said, we'll talk more about the tournament later on. Because uh, I booked my own version of it. Which I thought, I think is pretty solid. But, you know, that's just me. Uh, but yeah, when they announced this bracket, I'm just like... You know, one thing I like about... Actually, you know what? Fuck it. We'll save it for last. We'll, sa we'll save it for after. I want to go through this pay-per-view card. Because we got a lot of matches to talk about. I wrote out a hell of a pay-per-view. A lot of things to talk about. This might be a long video. If you watch my wrestling videos in the past, you know uh, I like to talk. And, you know, those videos would end up being like an hour or more. So, be wary that might happen here. So, anyways, let's go, let's go through the rest of the pay-per-view. Uh, so, we got the finals of the trio tournament. We have Thunder Rosa defending her AEW Women's title against Tony Storm. We have the, the pinnacle consisting of Wardlow and FTR taking on... Jay Lethal, Satnam Singh, and Sanjay Dutt. I don't know why the fuck this is on this pay-per-view, to be honest. That's a goddamn dynamite match. This shouldn't be on the card. Uh, I'll talk more about that later. Uh, and then we have... Uh, this was just announced. I didn't even see this, but... Uh, I don't know if it was just announced, but relatively new. Uh, casino ladder match. And those participants are to be decided. So that's probably just going to be like a clusterfuck match. Just to kind of throw a bunch of people on the pay-per-view. Which is fine. So yeah. Biggest show of the year, this is their Wrestlemania, and they have four matches announced, and two of those matches don't have participants announced for them, so it just looks like shit. It just, it looks like a shitty pay-per-view, I can't get excited for this, no offense to anybody announced for the card, but yeah, it, it's not exciting. What is exciting is the pay-per-view that I have come up with, so I have come up with 16 matches. Yes, we're actually going to break this down. So obviously, I wrote out a bunch of matches, made sure they all had storylines, made sure they had sent, they made sense, and uh, you know everything I can I, has a clear story and a clear ending. And we'll talk about that. Uh, but yeah, so I came up with 16 matches. But what we're going to do? Obviously, we're not going to have 16 matches at a pay per view. 
I don't want people watching wrestling for like six, seven hours. That's fucking ridiculous. What we're going to do is we're going to take those 16 matches and we're going to separate them. Uh, basically, uh, every, before a pay-per-view, usually the last Rampage show before a pay-per-view is a live show and it's kind of a special show. We're going to make that, we're going to load that show up. We're, the matches that were, or didn't make the cut for the pay-per-view are going to be on this special Rampage show. And uh, I've got four matches for that, so four out of the 16 are going to be on this Rampage. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's load this Rampage up. Let's get people excited for AEW All Outs. And uh, let's jump right into the booking of the show. So the first match I have, so we're going to be starting from the AEW Rampage show. I'm going to go from bottom to top. So our opener for the AEW Rampage show is going to be Luchasaurus taking on Lance Archer one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, to be honest, I'd probably make this like a some sort of hardcore match. Like, call it like a land before time match or something like that. Just give it like a dumb kind of gimmick name, but it's basically a hardcore match. And the storyline for this, very simple. Uh, obviously, Jungle Boy and Christian Cage have been feuding. I've been enjoying watching that on TV. I've been enjoying Christian Cage a lot. That just him with that turtleneck looking like Steve Jobs like oh my god is he gonna talk shit about Jungle Boy or reveal a new iPad I don't know I, I like it a lot though I like this new character for him and then you know you got Luchasaurus kind of stuck in the middle is he good is he bad he's in the all black he's kind of got a cane vibe to him I do like the repackaging of Luchasaurus he looks awesome um, and it looks like he's probably going to turn heel with Christian, and then that's kind of, you know, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus are going to kind of feud. Uh, for me personally, I would have Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy kind of stay together. Now, I don't mind separating them and having them do singles runs, uh, but for me, I feel like they should still be a team, you know? Have them do their single stuff, but every once in a while they can come together, reunite Jurassic Express, and they can do some tag stuff. And then with Lance Archer, you know, with Christian Cage, this character, he's talking a lot of shit, he's running his mouth, and I feel like Christian... My favorite Christian, some of his favorite runs of mine throughout his career were he always had like a heavy with him, you know? The problem solver, he had Tomko. Uh, in TNA, Christian Coalition, he had a group around him, AJ Tomko. I feel like this Christian needs a heavy, needs a big guy. You know, let him talk all his shit. Jungle Boy wants to fight Christian. Oh, look, he's got to go through Lance Archer first before he can get his hands on Christian. And I feel like Lance Archer would be a good fit for this kind of heavy role, big man, uh, for Christian Cage. He's a guy on the roster who is doing nothing. Honestly, his AEW run has been such a complete disappointment. He's been very on and off. He hasn't been used consistently. Uh, I remember when he debuted, he had the feud with Cody for the TNT title, and then he, like, disappeared. And then he came back. I think he had a feud with Moxley, then he had COVID, then he was out. Then he got removed from the world title match. Then he came back. And I think he feuded with somebody, you know, he feuded with Miro, then he disappeared. Then he came back, had a match with uh, Eddie Kingston, got injured, was gone. Then he came back, had the match with uh, Moxley, won the U.S. title, the IWGP U.S. title, then disappeared. He's just been so off and on with AEW, it's so frustrating, because, like, you forget that he's even there. And I feel like this would be a good role for him. Christian's been consistently featured on TV. And I feel like this would be a good role for Lance Archer. I wouldn't even mind starting a group with them. Get Christian, get a tag team. You got Lance Archer. You know, maybe like a Butcher and Blade. Uh, maybe like a private party. Uh, you know, you can... Easy storyline. Christian Cage, hey, private party. You know, I know you guys used to be mentored by Matt Hardy. But forget him. You know, I'm the real tag specialist. You know, you want to learn tag team wrestling, you're going to learn from me. And then Easy Feud, Private Party um, against the Hardys whenever Jeff comes back. And, uh, yeah, just a easy storyline right there. But I feel like Christian should definitely have a heavy. We're going to put Lance Archer in this situation. Jungle Boy has Luchasaurus. Christian Cage has Lance Archer. They're going to go one-on-one. -on -one, and they're going to be opening up this special Rampage. Also, one thing I forgot to mention about this, um, my booking of the show... Now, it is fantasy booking. Usually, I will go with the roster that's available. A couple of the people that I have listed for matches on these shows uh, are out injured. For example, I'm going to be using Cole, Adam Cole, um, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly. I believe two or three. I don't know if the whole group's injured, but at least two of them are. Um, but I have them on my pay-per-view. And uh, there's a couple other people that are kind of out with injuries at the moment. So, 
this is fantasy booking. Um, if everyone was healthy and good to go, this would be my pay-per-view. So I, I wanted to mention that at the beginning. So anyways, opening up Rampage, starting out our big road to the pay-per-view. Lance Archer, Luchasaurus, one-on-one, -on -one hardcore match. Two big guys just going at it. Um, as far as who would win, that, um... I might give the win to Lance Archer just to kind of have him do something, you know, give him some momentum. Um, but I wouldn't mind if either or won. I, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. So that would be my first match. Uh, next, next match on the Rampage. Remember, we're still doing the Rampage show. We have Ty Conte and Anna Jay representing the Jericho Appreciation Society taking on the team of Ruby Soho and Sky Blue. Easy storyline here. Uh, Anna Jay obviously was a babyface before. We'll talk more about that later. Hint, hint for a future the, a match uh, on my pay-per-view. Uh, but yeah, Ty Conte, Anna Jay, they're close. Ty Conte is with Jericho, Jericho Appreciation Society. Anna Jay is defected to that. Ty Conte, who smashed the door, uh, the car door on Ruby's arm, broke her arm, put her out. Um, Anna attacking Ruby, uh, when they did the, um, what match was it? I don't remember the match, but they were locked in the cage, and Ruby Soho had the key and stuff like that. And then you have Sky Blue, who's kind of been feuding with Ty Conte recently. You know, that you had Sammy and Ty Conte taking on Dante Martin and Sky Blue. They've done some stuff on, like, uh, Dynamite and Rampage. So you got Ruby Soho, you know, she's doing stuff with Ty Conte and Anna Jay. She's outnumbered. Boom, insert Sky Blue. Tag team match here. Uh, I'd give the win to Ruby Soho and Sky Blue. And uh, just kind of give a rub for Sky Blue, who's kind of like an up-and-coming woman's wrestler. And uh, I think this would be a good match for her. And uh, to kind of showcase what she has. You know? A nice little... Um, Kind of put a spotlight on her you know a lot of these matches that i'm going to be talking about building towards the future building up future stars some of them not all of them um, but this is one of those matches where we can have sky blue make her look good kind of put her on the level as some of the other women uh in aew so uh winner for this i'd go ruby soho and sky blue next a match that i'm actually pretty excited about when i was writing this pay-per-view we have the gun club in six-man tag team action, they're going to be taking on, obviously, the Gun Club, Gun Club consisting of Billy Gunn, Colton Gunn, Austin Gunn. I really enjoy the three of them together. I, I like the Ass Boys, uh, Gun Club, whatever you want to call them. I like the Acclaimed. Love the Acclaimed, to be honest. Everyone loves the Acclaimed, except the cop, or ex <laughs> except cops. Um, and I even like when they put these two teams together, the Acclaimed and the Gun Club. I'm like, what the fuck? Are they going to be doing to it? Like, what the fuck? Like, it just seemed like such a weird pairing. But they made it work. I enjoyed all their backstage vignettes. Their stupid little promos uh, that they had on, like, Rampage and Dynamite. They were very entertaining together. And, of course, you got to break them up. I don't like the direction that they're going in now where the gun club have turned on Billy. And it looks like Billy is going to go with the Acclaims. It just it doesn't make sense to me. It's like a father and his kids. Like, that, you know, that's a... That's a good story right there, you know? I, I don't know why they're breaking them up. And then you're going to have the gun club with, like, Stokely Hathaway. And he's trying to start this group. And he's got Ethan Page and stuff. That That's another, you know, story. But I think that's just a weird direction. I'd say let Stokely Hathaway, you know, have the baddies and Jade Cargill and that group. Uh, but, like, starting, like, a guys group kind of thing with Ethan Page and the gun club. I don't know. It could be good. I don't want to shit on it because it could be entertaining. Um, j but just looking at it, I, it just, it's a weird, it's weird, it's a weird group, but, um, anyway, so the match here, Gun Club taking on the Acclaimed, and of course, the Gun Club got three, Acclaimed are only two people, who's gonna be their tag team partner? Why, none other than Paul White. And I know you, what well, you might be saying, what the fuck, why are you gonna have Big Show in a match? Like, that doesn't make any sense. It is gonna make sense, let me explain it. So, Obviously, Gun Club, Acclaimed, they've been feuding. They had an awesome dumpster match. I enjoyed that. And, um, you know, obviously, they're outnumbered. Billy makes it a three-on-two. Acclaimed, they got nobody until they bring in the Big Show, Paul White. I might call him Big Show. I'm just going to call him Big Show, even though I know he's Paul White. It's just going to be easier for me. So they bring in Big Show. Easy storyline. 
About a year ago, at All Out last year, uh, Big Show was feuding with QT Marshall. Now, during that feud, he was kind of feuding with the factory, and then there was like a beatdown thing going on, and I remember like Big Show went out, he helped the gun club against the factory, and then the gun club turned on Big Show. They hit him with a steel chair, they beat him down. I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if there was any... Res resolve for that situation. I don't know if Big Show ever got his uh, comeuppance after that, or they just completely moved on. From my recollection, I believe they just moved on. They never addressed it ever again. Well, fuck that. We're giving it a goddamn. We're coming back a year later. We're finishing off that storyline. Paul White finally gets his revenge on the gun, gun club for turning on him. Acclaimed and Paul White taking on the gun club. You gotta give uh, Acclaimed and Paul White the win here. And, uh, and ending that fear. Yeah, and I think it'd be a good way to kind of give a claim the rub. You got Big Show, Big Superstar, uh, kind of put some more eyes on this match. And uh, I think it would look good for the acclaimed. I think they, they'd get a good rub off this. And then last but not least, our final match for this special AEW Rampage show. I'm honestly sad that I cut it from the pay-per-view, but I, I was looking at it two ways. Do I want it on the pay-per-view and it's kind of a bigger deal, or do I want to put it on this Rampage, make it the main event, and kind of make it a big deal that way? I decided to make it the main event of Rampage and kind of make it a bigger deal there, even though I would have loved to have it on the pay-per-view, but I had to cut some of the matches. I just felt the other matches on the pay-per-view were more... I don't want to say pay-per-view worthy, but... I had to cut something. This is the match I cut, and that match is Ricky Starks versus Powerhouse Hobbs. That's going to be my main event for AEW Rampage. Like I said, I like Ricky Starks. I like Powerhouse Hobbs. I like, you know, their stuff that they did as Team Taz. I like all the tag stuff they've been doing somewhat recently. And um, obviously they've br broken up, whatever, moving on from that. Um, I would like to have it on the pay-per-view. They're probably going to have it on AEW All Out. That's probably one of the matches that's going to happen. Uh, but with here, out of the 16 matches I had, I'm going to put it on AEW Rampage. It's going to be the main event. I'm going to make it a big deal. Honestly, I'd probably have Ricky win this match. You know, you powerhouse Hobbs, I would say, you know, beating the shit out of Ricky. Boom, boom, boom. Just spine bustering, choke slamming, not choke slam, clothesline, layering it, layering it, layering, layering it. Jesus Christ, lariat. He's going to lariat his head off. Larry Ting there. I fucking said it, Jesus Christ. I was struggling with that one. Um, yeah, just Powerhouse Hobbs using his name, being a powerhouse, just beating the shit out of Ricky. But what does Ricky have over Powerhouse Hobbs? He's got speed and brains, quickness. He's going to use that, you know, have Powerhouse Hobbs go for a move, you know, go for like a... Um, kind of a stinger splash, just kind of, he's going to squish Ricky. Ricky gets out of the way. Paros Hobbs, full contact into the turnbuckle, turns around, boom, eats a spear, one, two, three. Uh, or you can even have a roll-up and kind of continue this feud. Um, I would like to continue this feud after this, but uh, I'd probably give Ricky the, uh, the victory here. So uh, that is going to conclude our AEW Rampage special show, our pre-pay-per-view show, the pay-per-view matches that couldn't... That didn't make the, the final cut of the pay-per-view. So let's just go through that Rampage show one more time. Lance Archer versus Luchasaurus. Ruby Soho and Sky Blue versus Ty Conte and Anna Jay. The Acclaimed and Paul White taking on the Gun Club in six-man tag team action. And then the main event, Ricky Starks versus Powerhouse Hobbs. I think that's a pretty loaded Rampage show. I'm going to be honest. Every time I see the card announced for Rampage, it's pretty disappointing. It's like Rampage as a whole has been quite disappointing every time you look at the card you're like you know i can miss that nothing important is going to happen i'd like to see them put more emphasis on rampage uh because like i said rampage every time you see the card it legit like there'll be like a match where it's like you know i might have to check that out. uh fuck what's that guy's name uh Takeshita versus eddie kingston the match they had on um on rampage a couple weeks ago it's like okay i gotta check that one you know, that, that sounds like it's going to be good. But all their other matches are like, meh, you know. But every once in a while, they'll throw you like, a, okay, I got to check that match out. Uh, but for the most part, it's pretty much a miss, you know. Um, if you if you don't watch Rampage that week, you're not going to be missing anything going into the Dynamite the following week. So I want a more of a focus on AEW Rampage. I think this is a pretty loaded show. Uh, plus, it'd be a live show, so there's no pre-spoilers. You don't know who's going to win beforehand. 
I think that's another thing that hurts. Rampage is, you know, after Dynamite, they record Rampage, the results get posted, and people are like, okay, you know, I might check this out, I might check it out on YouTube, but if I miss the show, that's fine. So, um, yeah, I'd like to see more focus on Rampage. Let's put some more effort and big storylines on there. So, next, let's get into our AEW All Out. So we had 16 matches, we had 4 of them on the Rampage, that means that we're going to have 12 matches on the pay-per-view. That's still a lot, there's more than I wanted to have. I was like, maybe 10? You know, 8? Eight, 8 is like the sweet spot, right? 8 matches on a pay-per-view, boom, perfect. Uh, usually you have like 2 pre-show matches or something like that. Fuck it, no pre-show matches here, everything's on the pay-per-view, you're not going to want to miss it. So. What are we going to start our AEW All-Out pay-per-view with? Well, we got to start it out with an exciting match. A match that's going to get the crowd hot. And my opener is going to be for the AEW World Tag Team Championships, Swerve in Our Glory, Swerve Strickland, and Keith Lee taking on the only people that they should be taking on, FTR. FTR should be getting a title match at this pay-per-view. I don't know why they're not. Uh, I don't know why they're in this stupid feud with, like... You know, I don't mind if Wardlow and Jay Lethal feud. Um, but then you get the FTR involved, and they're feuding with, like, Sanjay, who's already said, like, yeah, I don't want to wrestle, I'm doing backstage stuff. And then you got Satnam Singh, who's obviously a big guy, can't do much, he's still learning professional wrestling. You know, like, this Jay Lethal's gonna wrestle the whole fucking match! Yeah, I, I don't like that six-man tag on the pay-per-view. FTR should be challenging for the titles. Swerve in our glory, FTR. You gotta give it to FTR. Let them be the champs again. I, I like them having all the belts, but one thing I don't like about AEW, all the championship belts. You dilute your fucking titles so much by having all the other companies. Ring of Honor, New Japan, AAA, um, fucking Christ, like everybody's title, it seems like everybody has a title. You know, and it's if somebody's watching for the first time, you know, they're switching through the channels. They're like, oh, my God, uh, AEW, I've never heard of this, but I like wrestling. I used to watch wrestling. Let me give this a chance. And they watch the show and it seems like everyone has a fucking championship. If everyone's a champion, no one's a champion. You know, if everyone has a championship, then like it doesn't mean anything. So get rid of all these fucking titles. Get rid of the Ring of Honor stuff. I like the like what they're got planned for Ring of Honor. But, you gotta think, if a new fan watches the show, who the fuck's the champion? Everyone's got a championship. Like, just get rid of all the titles. FTR, I know they're multiple-time tag team champion, they're IWGP tag team champion, they're Ring of Honor, AAA. That's fine. You know, let them be, like, the belt collectors for this. But, um, in regards to everyone else's titles, like, just... Stop showing them on TV. It's really annoying. I I fucking hate it with a passion. Like it, it's just really annoying to see every every show. So yeah, give FTR the titles. Let them be the tag team champions. Their faces now. I don't know who would take the titles from them eventually, but you know, let them have a decent run with the titles. Uh, maybe drop it to the Young Bucks eventually. We'll see. Or are the Young Bucks going to be busy with something else? Mm -hmm. We'll get to that later. So yeah, that'd be our opener, Swerve in Our Glory, FTR, AEW World Tag Team Championship match, and we have new AEW World Tag Team Champions, FTO. Next match on the pay-per-view, a match that will probably happen uh, on uh, the actual AEW All Out show, we have Eddie Kingston taking on Sammy Guevara. Uh, the storyline is very simple. Eddie was feuding with Jericho in the Jericho Appreciation Society, the big barbed wire match. He's got Jericho dead to rights. Sammy gets involved. Costetti is big match. Boom, sets this up. Easy. Easy. The story is easy. Uh, and this would be the blow off. Let Eddie get the win and beat the shit out of Sammy and then move on. I don't know what he would do next, but um, Eddie wins and he can kind of move on to uh, something else. Next match on the show, a match that I am pretty excited for. And it has a good story, in my opinion. So, for the AEW All-Atlantic Championship match, we have Pac defending his title against Brian Danielson. And Daniel Garcia in a three-way. Easy story here. 
Easy. You got Brian Danielson. Well, first, you got Pac. He's a champion. Boom. He's a babyface. He's accepting. He's a fighting champion. He'll, he'll accept all challenges. You have Brian Danielson, who... Uh, I'll talk about my other plan that I had for him. Um, but basically, Brian Danielson, part of the Blackpool Combat Club. Only guy in the group without gold. You got John Moxley, interim world champion. You got Claudio, Ring of Honor world champion. You got Wheeler Yuta, Ring of Honor pure champion. Daniel Bryan's got no gold. He's like, hey, you know what? Fuck it. I want some gold. So here were his options. Taking out Wardlow for the TNT championship or taking on uh, Pac for the AEW All-Atlantic championship. Now, even though this is fantasy booking, uh, I wouldn't put Wardlow against Brian Danielson. I might call him Daniel Bryan. I apologize if I do. Uh, just, you know, slip of the tongue. I'm used to Daniel Bryan. You know, I'm not. I was used to him being Brian Danielson. Now I'm used to him being Daniel Bryan, and now he's back to Brian Danielson. So if I do call him Daniel Bryan, forgive me. Uh, but yeah, anyways, Wardlow taking on Brian Danielson. Even though this is fantasy booking, in my head, I'm like, I can't see Brian taking a powerbomb. You know, a guy who has notoriously been tons of injuries with his head, his brain, taking a powerbomb that's the worst move for someone with a head injury. So I'm like, even though this is fantasy booking, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. And still, I think Pac versus Danielson would be the better match. It just would be. And then insert Daniel Garcia. Obviously, he's been feuding with Brian Danielson. He's got a win over Danielson. Um, and then they just did the two out of three falls match where Danielson got his victory back. Daniel Garcia still took a victory off him. So technically, they're like two and two. Um, I mean, yeah, technically they're two and two. Danielson has beaten him twice, and Garcia has beaten him twice. Um, yeah, Danielson's like, you know what? I want a title shot. Pac, I challenge you for the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. Daniel Garcia's like, oh, no, 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 no. I beat you. What makes you think you get a title match? I want a title match. And then Pac's just like, fuck it. I'll take both of you. So boom, three-way. Daniel Garcia, Pac, Brian Danielson. Three-way for the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. For me personally, I would have Daniel Garcia win this. I think this would be a big coming out match for him. Uh, give something for Jericho Appreciation Society. Bring them some gold. Uh, and then you can kind of um, build some jealousy in towards that where... You know, Garcia, me, you know, young guy starts feeling himself. Hey, I'm a champion, you know. You know, what's going on in this group? Jericho, you call yourself a champion, you're not, you got no gold. And uh, eventually they all turn on Garcia, turn Garcia babyface. And um, that leads into like a Jericho, Daniel Garcia feud. But that's like four, five, six months in the making down the line. Let him have a good run with the AEW All Atlantic Championship. Let him have some good matches. He's a good wrestler, good sports entertainer. Uh, I think this would be a good rub for him. Right now, it looks like it's going to be... They're, they're teasing Daniel Garcia versus Jericho for AEW All Out. You know, is Daniel Garcia buddies with Brian Danielson, or is he Team Jericho Appreciation Society? I think what they're going to end up doing for the pay-per-view is Brian Danielson versus Chris Jericho. And then, you know, during the match... Pa, um, Jericho might be like, yo, throw me a chair, throw me a bat, throw me something. And Daniel Garcia, you know, he's conflicted. Does he do it? Blah, blah, blah. But probably the match for the pay-per-view that they're going to do is Brian Danielson versus Chris Jericho. But on my pay-per-view, we're going to have Brian Danielson, Pac, and Daniel Garcia in a killer three-way for the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. And Daniel Garcia will be our new AEW All-Atlantic Champion. Next... For the AEW TBS Championship, we have Chade Cargill defending her title against, sadly, an injured Chris Statlander. Uh, it, you know, before she got injured, it looks like, you know, they were kind of building her up to take on Jade in a big match. Maybe all out or maybe, um, you know, just a match on a dynamite. Unfortunately, she got injured, so that's not going to happen, but in my fantasy world, she doesn't get injured, and we're going to have this match, Jade Cargill versus Chris Statlander, and um, I might put the title on, on Chris Statlander, to be honest. Or, you know, I don't know, I'm 50-50, but if I probably had to make a call, I'd put it on Chris, have her be the TBS champion, see how she goes, maybe continue the feud, maybe Cargill wins... Cargill wins the title again, and then they kind of drop it back and forth a little bit in uh, kind of a hot potato situation. You know, you don't want the that to happen too many times to the title, but if they're in a feud, 
and they're it's like kind of like a blood feud. They're both two peak athletes competing against each other. Sometimes one's going to have a better night than the other, and that might just involve uh, the championship on the line, and it might change. So you know what? I would say let's put it on Chris and uh, you know continue the feud, and then we might toss it back to Jade eventually. But uh, here on the pay-per-view, I'm going to give it to Chris Statlander. Next match on the pay-per-view, continuing our hot streak, we've got six-man tag team action. Some people might not agree with this match, but it looks like they're kind of building towards it. Uh, even though I know some people would probably have one of these groups in another match. We'll talk about that later. Um, and that is going to be my match of House of Black in a six-man tag team match against Darby Allin, Sting, and Miro. Uh, obviously, you got Miro and Malachi Black kind of feuding together. Uh, you've got Darby and Brody uh, King feuding. You know, Sting and Buddy, Mer or sorry, Buddy Matthews <coughs> did some stuff on Dynamite in the casket match. It seems like they're all heading towards one singular match, six-man tag team match. I think this might happen at the pay-per-view. Um, and then honestly, here I would have you know Julia Hart get involved in the ending. And then, boom, C.J. Perry, formerly known as Lana, comes out, stops her from trying to seduce Miro, and then we pair together Miro and uh, C.J. Perry, his real-life wife, uh, together in AEW. Now, I don't necessarily want to see her in AEW, C.J. Perry. I'm just going to call her Lana, because C.J. Perry is a mouthful. I don't really want to see Lana in AEW. I've been really enjoying the Miro stuff. He might not wrestle as much as I want to, but any time the man is in a promo package or is delivering some backstage promo, god damn, it's a killer promo. Like, I love it. The Pagans, my god, the Redeemer. Like, I, I love the whole presentation of it. I really, really, really like this mirror. I'm a big fan. And um, I just like all the backstage vignettes that they do with him, all, him talking. I don't mind that he talks all every week. You know, he's got a different promo. It's interesting. It's engaging. I would like to see him fight a little more. Put him in a match with Brody King. Put him in a match with Buddy Matthews. Let's build this up a little bit. Um, but at the pay-per-view, our big match is going to be a six-man tag team action. Maybe make it a tornado tag. Maybe make it a hardcore match. Uh, just to kind of cover up for Sting, you know, who's obviously not going to do too much. And with a hardcore match, you can kind of, like, lay him out. <clears throat> you know, you have Brody King, boom, power bomb through a table, stings out for most of the match, stuff like that. Uh, and as far as who wins, well, judging by that ending that uh, I kind of pitch, where uh, Lana comes out and stops Julia Hart from getting involved, Miro, maybe he pins Malachi Black? I would have Miro pin somebody. Um... Maybe I'd save it, you know, have have him pin Buddy Matthews or Brody King and don't have him pin uh, Malachi Black. Let's, you know, continue to build, build towards that, a big singles match. Um, but I probably would give the win to uh, Darby Allen, Sting, and Miro. And I know a lot of people are probably like, House of Black, why are they in this match? Why aren't they in your uh, six-man tag team tournament? They're in the tournament. We'll talk more about that later. We're getting to that uh, trio's title. But honestly, they've been building towards Miro and, and Malachi Black, so it just kind of makes sense. Uh, and plus, what I explained, Darby and Brody King been going at it, Sting and Buddy Matthews. Just put them together. Just put them together, have a match, and uh, have them go to town. I can definitely see this match being added to uh, AEW All Out, too. So, we'll have to wait to see if it actually happens. But, uh, yeah, some sort of tornado tag or um, maybe a hardcore match for this. Next match, we have Wardlow defending his AEW TNT Championship against Hangman Page. Now, I was kind of debating this one because uh, I wanted to put Hangman in a match. And uh, when, I, when I first booked this pay-per-view, I started out with all the champions. World title match, uh, six-man tag title match, women's match, uh, TBS women's match, All-Atlantic... Tag, uh, there's so many fucking titles. Anyways, there was like six or seven matches right there with the titles. And I was trying to think to myself, like, you know, on TV, Wardlow's having his feud with Jay Lethal. They just had a match at Battle of the Belts. I don't know if I want to have a rematch necessarily here on AEW All Out. You know, 
I wanted to put a fresh match on, on this paper. And then I had Hangman Page. I really didn't know what to do with him. You know, I thought about putting him with the Bucks and the Six Man. Um, but I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. We'll keep Kenny with the Bucks. And I'm like, what am I going to do with Hangman? I didn't know what to do with Wardlow. I didn't know what to do with Hangman. Hey, let's just put them together. And uh, kind of a simple story. Hangman Page. I want to be the first Triple Crown winner. I won the world title. I won the tag title. Obviously, there's Atlantic and six-man title coming soon. Uh, but to be the Triple Crown winner, I got to win the TNT Championship. Wardlow, you got it. Uh, also, what you can do after reading the pay-per-view, maybe make this a, um, a multi-man ladder match and just kind of throw a bunch of guys in here. You can put Wardlow. You can put Hangman Page. You can put... Uh, obviously, you got to put Wardlow. He's the champion. Uh, you can put, put Hangman Page. You can put um, Jay Lethal in here. You can put Andrade in here. Uh, Scorpio Sky. Ethan Page. Uh, you know, make it a, um, like a six-man or eight-man ladder match for the um, TNT Championship. You can do that as well. Uh, I'm probably going to stick with uh, Wardlow and Hangman Page, but that's another idea we could do, a ladder match. Uh, for the TNT title with a bunch of people. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to keep it simple. Wardlow, Hangman Page, one-on-one. Like I said, story simple. Hangman wants to be Triple Crown winner. Wardlow wants a tough competitor. You got a former world champion challenging for your title. And uh, I would have Wardlow retain the uh, AEW TNT Championship. There's no point in taking it off. Uh, just keep it on him. Let, let him keep busting heads. Now this next match... People might scratch their heads. And this will all make sense later. But. In a six man tag team action. Not for the six man tag team championship. That match will happen later on. But just in regular six man tag team action. We have the Elite. Consisting of Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Taking on the undisputed Elite. Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah. Um. I wouldn't have these guys in the uh, six-man tag team title tournaments. I would um, I would have them each cost each other their match in the pay-per-view. You know, have uh, Undisputed Era cost Kenny and the Bucks their match. Then the Young Bucks cost Undisputed Elite their match. Obviously, they've been building up to it. Undisputed Elite turned on the Young Bucks. Kenny's back. Big six-man tag. We're going to have it at the pay-per-view. It's going to be a big match. But it's not going to be for the AEW six-man Tag Team Championship. It's just going to be a regular six-man tag. Maybe the winner of this can be the number one contender. But um, as far as who wins, I think you would have to give it to Kenny and the Bucks, to be honest. And then obviously you continue it. You got Adam Cole and Kenny in a match. Uh, maybe save it for the next pay-per-view, which I believe is full gear. You got Young Bucks. They can do another match with uh, Fish and O'Reilly. I don't think they've had one-on-ones. Or like like a one on one tag team match. Uh, I know they had the three way at um, double or nothing, I believe. Or was it Revolution? I don't remember. Whatever. It's not important. Uh, obviously, this wouldn't be the last time they would be feuding together. This would be continuing, and um, yeah, I, I would definitely look forward to a Kenny Omega Cole, Adam Cole match. I think that'd be pretty good. So that's one of my matches next on the pay per view. Uh, next on the card, we're almost done with this pay-per-view. We still got a few more matches. Like I said, we had 16 matches. 12 are on the pay-per-view. We're almost through. Uh, next match, this is a match that's definitely going to probably... I would say 99.999% it's going to happen on the pay-per-view. Christian Cage and Jungle Boy uh, in a one-on-one -on -one match. Obviously, we talked about them earlier with the Lancer Archer and Luchasaurus stuff. And uh, obviously, they're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. I've been enjoying the feud. I look forward to their match at uh, All Out. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's going to happen. But like I said, high chance, high chance. And uh, yeah, I'd like to see this uh, feud continue. Definitely in like a steel cage match where you got like Christian who's kind of always running away. Lance Archer who's always kind of getting involved. Definitely end this one in a steel cage match. Now that's down the line. I definitely would hear just a regular one-on-one -on -one match. Uh, let them beat the shit out of each other. And um, I would probably let Christian win. Maybe Jungle Boy. Uh, this is another 50-50. Uh, I think whoever wins, it's fine. 
Uh, if I had to pick a winner, I'd say Christian. Let Jungle Boy continue to chase, chase Christian and um, continue the feud. Next match, we've got a big tag team match. We got eight man tag team action. We have the Jericho Appreciation Society. Jericho, Hager, Matt Menard, and Angelo Parker. That's who's going to be representing the Jericho Appreciation Society. Because obviously, Daniel Garcia, is in, he's in the three-way for the Atlantic title. And uh, Sammy's taking on Eddie in a one-on-one -on -one match. So this is a leftover of the uh, Jericho Appreciation Society. And they will be taking on the Dark Order, consisting of Evil Uno, John Silver, Alex Reynolds, and Preston Vance. This is a pretty easy storyline as well. You know, you've got Anna Jay, who defected from the Dark Order and joined the Jericho Appreciation Society. You have Dark Order in the ring. Anna, why did you turn on us? You were like a sister to us. You know, Brody named you number 99. He saw so much potential on you. How could you join the Jericho Appreciation Society? Jericho comes out and he's like, Bro, you guys are a bunch of fucking losers. Okay? And just basically destroy them. And here would be the the kicker of the line. Brody's dead. Dark Order is nothing. You know? Dark Order, you know, you guys had so many members. Where's Colt Cabana? Where's uh, Alan Angels? Where's Stu Grayson? Dark Order's falling apart. You know, you have the leader. He's a stupid kid. He's a kid. He can't even get involved. And just basically verbally destroy Dark Order. And, um, yeah, just like Anna Jay left you guys because you're a bunch of losers. Why the fuck is she going to stay around? She jumped to a, uh, a rising ship. You know, Jericho Appreciation Society. She wants to learn from the best. She joined me. I'm taking her under my wing. And she's going to be a big star, big sports entertainer. And obviously this would lead to a big match, a big eight-man tag match. I think this was, would actually be a pretty exciting match to watch. I don't know if you'd do like uh, Anarchy in the um, arena like they did with uh, Blackpool Combat Club. I think you gotta do something crazy. Um, I don't know if this can just be an eight-man tag match. Maybe throw a stipulation on it. But uh, I think this would be a fun match. It gives Dark Order something to do because honestly, since Brody died, they have not known what the fuck to do with this co with this group. Are they heel? Or are they fa their faces? Yeah, but like, now we can't really do anything with them. We can't turn them heel because they're fan favorites because of Brody. And um, they're just put in this weird spot where they kind of just exist because of Brody. And obviously, I love Brody Lee. I thought he was awesome and as the exalted one. I, th I, I really, really loved his character. But honestly, what do you do with the Dark Order? I think this would be a fun thing to do, uh, kind of give them something to do, feud with Jericho. Honestly, so, this match kind of took place because uh, I had Jericho, I didn't know what to do with him. I didn't have a match, uh, a feud for him to do, and I was kind of like racking my brain, like, what can we do, what can we do? And uh, this just kind of came to me, Dark Order versus Jericho Appreciation Society. I think the fans would be really into it. And for me personally, I would try and build... Uh, Preston Vance is like a big star. Let's do something with Dark Order. You know, like I said, they're just kind of there. Let's try and build somebody up. And Preston Vance is the pretty much logical choice. He's a young guy. He's got a great look. Let's do something with him. Let's try and build him up. So I would really uh, try and focus on like Jericho and Preston kind of doing stuff. Maybe even get to a point where... Um, uh, here's an idea. Boom. Jericho throws a fireball in his face. The mask catches on fire. And he takes off the mask. And that's how we unmask Preston. And we see, oh, he's a good-looking guy. And, um... That, that angers him. Because he's like, you know, Negative One made that mask for me. He designed it. You know, I, Negative One means a lot to me. Brody means a lot to me. Brody Jr. The whole family. Like, you destroyed this. And that, that's how we're going to kind of unmask him, because uh, Jericho threw a fireball. And, you know, just kind of give him some personality. Take off the mask, let's see his face, let's see some facial stuff. Um, let's see him get angry. He's a big beefcake of a guy. Have him have a big match, big man match with Hager. Um, but I would say the big match that we would be building towards would be a, a 
Jericho versus Preston Vance, or even, hey, maybe we don't want to take the, the mask off Preston Vance yet. Maybe let's go Lucha with it. Hey, Jericho, I'll unmask myself. I'll take off this mask, this mask that means a lot to me. If you shave your head, do a hair versus mask match. Maybe we have Preston win. Maybe we have him lose. Or we remove the mask that way. Or maybe we have him win. And then you have Jericho who's like, fuck it, I'm not getting my head shaved. And, uh, you know, you get another, get Matt Menard, boom. Him with his crazy facials with no hair. Have him shave his head instead of Jericho. There's a bunch of different things that you can do here. Um, but I would definitely try and push Preston Vance as, uh, like an up-and-coming guy. A guy that we should look out for and... I think Jericho and Preston Vance in a one-on-one -on -one match. I think that would be good for, for Preston. And, uh, you know, maybe even Jericho tries to recruit Preston. Hey, Preston, you're a good-looking guy. You don't need the mask. Look, <clears throat> you are a perfect sports entertainer. You know, we've seen you in the mask. You can do the goofy stuff. You got a great look. Come join the Jericho Appreciation Society. Look at Anna Jay. She's thriving. Get away from Dark Order. They're a bunch of geeks. And then you kind of... Uh, toy with with his morality does he take the jericho appreciation society's offer does he join does he abandon dark order like anna J? bunch of different stuff you can do you can actually build this out quite a bit there i'd throw out a couple different ideas where we can kind of build uh, a storyline for a couple months going on and uh I, I think this could actually lead to something so i'd be excited to uh to see it. And honestly, what just popped into my head, Matt Menard, he's got some great facials. He's a funny guy. Him, you know, kind of talking shit to Negative One. Negative One, you know, he wants to jump on Matt Menard, get a piece of him. And Matt Menard, get that stupid kid away from me, from Daddy Magic. You know, there's some funny stuff that can happen there. I think there's some really entertaining stuff. To be honest, the more I talk about this, the more I want to see this. I think it would actually be really entertaining. And it would give Dark Order something to do. Next, on the pay-per-view, we've got three matches left. Next, for the AEW World's Women's Championship, we've got Thunder Rosa defending her women's title against Jamie Hayter, Tony Storm, and Britt Baker in a four-way match. Uh, obviously, we're going to have Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm in a one-on-one -on -one match at the pay-per-view. Uh, I think this should be a four-way. Um, it, it should be a four-way. You get Britt involved, you get Jamie Hayter involved. They've been kind of doing stuff recently. And uh, I would honestly put the title on Jamie Hayter here. Uh, this is another... I talked earlier about building stars. We're going to build Jamie. We're going to make her the AEW Women's title. And uh, obviously that's going to lead towards Britt Baker eventually turning on Jamie. Jamie, how can you do this to me? You know, I, you know, I brought you into the company. And you're going to take my woman's title from me? And then Jamie's like, you know, the better woman won that night. That was me. And... Uh, that could lead to Jamie turning face and then feuding with Britt for the title. Uh, then you can have Thunder Rose and Tony Storm kind of feud together. Because, uh, you know, they're kind of teaming the Thunderstorm, which... Just, the, what a heck of a name. Thunder Rose and Tony Storm. They are now Thunderstorm. You can't make this shit up. <laughs> um, yeah, they've been kind of teasing a little bit of dissension. So maybe you got Thunder Rose and Tony. Hey, you know, let's see. Who's the... You know, Thunder, she's the former champion. Tony Storm, she's the number one contender. She's the number one contender. She feels like she should have the title match. Thunder feels like she should have the title match. They go at it. Boom. They can have a feud, too. Uh, but I would try and build Jamie Hayter from this. I think she's got a good look. She's good in the ring. And uh, I think it's time to separate her and Britt Baker and have her uh, on her own. And we're going to make her the world champion. I, I would also like to see her feud with, like, Serena Deeb. I think they would have a good match. Uh, there's a couple other women on the roster that uh, she can have killer matches with. So that, that is my choice. We're going to go with Jamie Hayter. She is our new AEW Women's Champion. Next, we have the co-main events for the AEW World Six-Man Tag Team Tournament uh, Finals to crown the first ever AEW Six-Man Tag Team Champions. This might be controversial, but this is my fantasy booking. My finals is going to be... Best Friends and Orange Cassidy taking on Will Ospreay and Ozzy Open. We're going to talk about the tournament in a second, but this would be my finals match. Uh, honestly, I would put the titles on Best Friends and Orange Cassidy. Uh, there are guys that have been there since the beginning of the company. I don't know if we'll ever see them get 
tag titles. I think this would be like the closest thing to seeing them get some gold, put some gold around Orange Cassidy's waist, uh, give him something to do. I think this would be fun. Um, and I, I think this would be a good, I think they would be a good uh, first six-man tag team champions. Uh, and then Will Ospreay and Ozzy Open. Obviously, you can continue the feud from uh, from Forbidden Door where Orange Cassidy and Will Ospreay faced. Will Ospreay, hey, Orange Cassidy, I already beat you. We beat you guys in six-man tag team action. And then Chuck Taylor can be like, no, you didn't. You faced them with Rocky Romero. You haven't faced them with me. When best friends and Orange Cassidy are at their, their best, the three of them together, uh, you know, you had Rocky Romero take my place. He can't take my place. So this would build towards a six-man tag. And obviously, best friends, Orange Cassidy, they would be my first AEW World six-man tag team champions. I know that's not everyone's ideal finals, but it makes sense. I made it make sense. It's got story. I like it a lot. I think it's it's a good, uh, good finals. Let's talk about the tournament, though, before we wrap up we got one more match which is the main event which it's kind of a given but i want to talk about the tournament for a second one thing that i find disappointing about the aew world six-man tag team title tournament you got eight teams and you know one thing i like about aew is the roster is so big you've got tons of guys you've got tons of tag teams tons of stables a bunch of different groups i'm going to list them all in a second um, but you could have easily had like a 16 tag tournament and I think it would have been a great way to kind of have everybody on the roster in this tournament. So I'm going to go through the, the tournament that I've assembled. We got 16 teams and uh, I'm going to go from uh, bottom to top or sorry top to bottom. First we got the factory. QT Marshall, Aaron Solo, Nick Camarado, Anthony Agogo, and Cole Carter. You could have used any three of those. I think they would have been fun. Obviously, they're not going to make it far in the tournament, but they're there. Use them. You got Dark Order. Uh, we have already talked about them earlier, but you can have them in the tournament. You got Blackpool Combat Club, John Moxley, Danielson, Claudio, Wheeler Yuta. Have them go at it. Death Triangle, Pac, Penta, Ray Phoenix, Best Friends, Chuck, Trent, Orange Cassidy, Undisputed Era, House of Black, Gun Club, Jericho Appreciation Society, The Wingmen, we can bring them back, Peter Avalon, Ryan Nemeth, Cesar Bonone, and JD Drake. You've got Trust Busters, a newer group consisting of Arya Davari, Slim J, Parker Boudreaux, and Sunny Kiss. You can have any three of those. For this tournament, I would reunite SCU have them come back maybe even have them have a deep run in the tournament maybe even have scu versus best friends and orange cast orange cassidy in the finals two teams that were aew originals you have scu who was a great trios team before uh like in ring of honor and stuff they were the first aew tag team champions i think they should come together scorpio's not doing anything daniels isn't doing anything kazarian's not doing anything I think this would be a fun way to kind of reunite them and have them have some fun tag team matches. You know, like I said, AEW Originals, Best Friends in Orange Cassidy versus uh, SCU. That could be a possible uh, finals match. I went with Will Ospreay and Ozzy Open, obviously to continue from the feud at Forbidden Door. Just made sense to me. But um, SCU, that's another t uh, tag, or another tag team you could have put in here. We have La Faction in... in Burn, ignore Bernable. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got Andrade, Rush, Dragon Lee. You got Kenny Omega and the Bucks. Will Ospreay, Ozzy Open. That's 15 teams right there. I'm going to throw in a 16th one, obviously, to round out the tournament. Um, let's give some love to Ring of Honor. I know I was shitting on the Ring of Honor tag team titles earlier. Or not tag team titles. I was just shitting on all the titles being featured. But you got Dalton Castle and the boys. They're the current six-man tag team titles, uh, six-man tag team champions in Ring of Honor. Why not include them in this tournament? You want to include Ring of Honor, guys? Here, easy way. Dalton Castle and the boys. Hey, we're the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. Or Ring of Honor World Six-Man Tag Team Champions. We're going to take this tournament. We're going to win. Look, we've already proven we're a great trios team. And now we're going to show it in AEW. Boom. 16 teams right there it all makes sense i think you got some fun matches in there it's a great way to kind of incorporate the whole roster in this tournament and uh i'm i'm kind of angry that um they didn't do this that they didn't uh 
incorporate more of the roster. You got so many teams. It seems like everybody's part of a team. Everybody's part of a faction. Let's use that. Let's use this big roster. Let's do some stuff. You can even throw together some three three guys. Punk and FTR. You can do Wardlow and FTR. You can have Lethal, Sanjay, and Satnam Singh. They can be a group. There's so many people that you could have included in this tournament. And I don't know why you just kept it to the eight. And uh, the eight are kind of disappointing. So that's how I would have done my tournament. Actually, the more I think about it, I kind of like SCU versus Best Friends and Orange Cassidy. It's very early AEW, the two original teams. Who's going to win the six-man tag team titles? I like that idea, but we're going to stick with Osprey and Ozzy Open versus Best Friends and Orange Cassidy for the six-man tag team titles. And we're going to have Best Friends and Orange Cassidy win and become the six-man tag team champions. And maybe we can even build towards another match. How about Wrestle Kingdom? Will Osprey, Orange Cassidy. Let's do it again. Hey, Osprey, you defeated Orange Cassidy at uh, Forbidden Door. Orange Cassidy and Best Friends defeated Will Osprey and Ozzy Open at All Out. Hey, let's have a rubber match. Let's have it at Wrestle Kingdom. Boom! Even more building to the future. I like it. It's a good idea. And last but not least, we're not the most shocking match in the world. John Moxley, CM Punk. We're going to have the unification match for the AEW World Title. That's honestly the only main event match that makes sense. Moxley, CM Punk. I liked what they did this past week. Or, or CM Punk's line. Moxley... You're not even the third best member in your group, and that seems to be a recurring theme. Damn! That's a hell of a line right there. And, uh, you know, all this drunk drama with CM Punk and the Hangman and backstage politics and AEW. I think uh, this obviously this match will happen at the pay-per-view, even though they're advertising it for Dynamite. I don't know why. Obviously, they're going to have a fuck finish on the show. That's going to lead to a match at AEW All Out, so I don't even know why you're bothering to have it on the show. Just save it for the pay-per-view. And, um, yeah, I wouldn't even bother doing this, uh, what they're doing now on the, on TV, teasing. We're going to have the unification match next week. Blah, 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 blah. Don't miss it. We don't have a main event for AEW All Out. How are you telling me that, like... You're, you're telling me we're going to get a clean finish, and then either way, we get a clean finish, we're still going to see probably Moxley versus Punk. Because whoever loses is the number one contender. He's the former champion. So either way, we would see that match at the pay-per-view. But I would save it. Unification match. And uh, I would have Punk go over. I would. Um, I'd have Punk go over, beat Moxley, retain the title, or unify the title, whatever you want to say. And uh, after the match, I would have MJF come out, make his return, and attack CM Punk. And I'd have him cut uh, a pipe bomb of a promo. Hey, Punk, I'm back. You know, I did what you did. I took, I got my ball and I took it home. I know what it's like to be you. Hey, Punk, you think you're this locker room leader? I knew all along you were this snake. Blah, 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 blah. I would have MJF be a, a baby face. Um, MJF, you know, I would have him be a tweener, really. Because uh, I'd have him do some baby face stuff. Mainly babyface, but I'd also have him a heel. You know, like, you know, he's being interviewed. Well, you know, what you know, what, what makes you think you you can interview me? You know, just being his arrogant self. Um, but I would still kind of build him towards as a babyface. An easy thing. Punk, I'm going to take that AEW world title from me. No, you're not. You can't just come in and demand a title shot. You're going to have to earn it. You're not even top five ranked. When's the last time you won a match? Last time we saw you, you were getting beaten up by Wardlow. What makes you think you get a world title match, buddy? No, you start at the back of the line. And you have MJF build his way up. And eventually he becomes the number one ranked. And we have MJF and Punk. MJF and, Punk. and we can have that four, five, six months down the line. Build up towards it. Make MJF a big face. Even though I know that sounds weird. Making MJF a baby face. Uh, and then punk a heel, but you know what? I think it would actually be quite interesting. So I would have MJF make his big return at the end of the pay-per-view. That is all AEW All Out. Booked the 16 matches. All of them have stories. All of them make sense. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you watch it all the way through. What do you think of my pay-per-view? What matches would you like to see from here? Um, what would you change? What would you do instead? Let me know in the comment section. 
uh, like I said, I haven't done a wrestling video in quite some time. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Maybe we'll do another wrestling video soon. Kind of talking about the state of wrestling that it's in. Uh, with AEW, WWE, you got Impact doing stuff. Um, New Japan. It's a pretty exciting time to be a wrestling fan. And then we can also talk about 2K22 and, and my thoughts on that. So, uh, Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments section. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Catch me next time. And until then, guys, peace out.